I would like to first thank my legal counsel, Ravi, for being there for me and having supported me throughout this journey. Um, I would like to invite Ravi on the stage as I wish to thank all of you. This is the defining moment in the history of Singapore. For you Singaporeans, I'm so proud that you have finally exercised your right to freedom of assembly. And I would like to thank you from my bottom of my heart. For the last 10 years of struggling in the human rights law in Singapore, you have in this instance showed tremendous support and thank you once again for your solidarity. And this last two weeks have been, last two or three weeks have been quite a trying moment for Roy. And I wish and I look forward to your support and blessings in the challenging times ahead. And I thank you, Singapore. Hey! Thank you, thank you. Thank you, I, I actually have to read from a script because I cannot go out of point in case <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Singapore has come a long way in our country's history. Today, we are at a crossroads. Now, how can our country continue to grow while our people will be taken care of, protected, and cared for? Now, as citizens who care for our country, as Singaporeans who have a stake in our country, it is our birthright and it is our responsibility to speak up, to voice out, so that we can create solutions for our country and better not only our lives, but that of our fellow men. Yes. 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 And after nearly 50 years, Singapore might have a first world economy and we have first world costs. But do we have a first world government? No! Do we have a first world life? No! The class government! Now, today, many Singaporeans struggle with our lives. Earning the lowest wages among the high income countries even as Singapore has become the most expensive place to live in the world. Now Singaporeans struggle to make ends meet and fear that we do not have enough to use. Now but this shouldn't happen. This shouldn't be where Singapore is today. Not when Singapore is now one of the richest countries in the world. Yes, this disparity shouldn't happen when our politicians are paid the highest salaries in the world. Yes, this shouldn't happen when Singaporeans struggle day by day. It shouldn't happen. Now, we are not envious of our government. Now, we do not. We are not people who are envious. Singaporeans are cool-headed people. We know that if we can trust you, we will stick true, thick and thin with you. Yeah. Now, Singaporeans are humble people. We are reasonable people. Yeah. Now, someone told me, for us Singaporeans, if you treat us well, we will treat you even better. Yeah. Now we have integrity. We believe in justice. Yeah. Now we believe in fairness. Yeah. But when you betray our trust, yeah. now we will not hold back and we will not take it lightly. Yeah. Yeah. Now a 
government should protect its citizens. A government should put its citizens first and create policies that take care of the Singaporeans and make sure that we are safe in our own country. Yeah. Now the government has a responsibility to listen to its people, to be humble and to work with the people. This is what the government should be doing. Now when Singaporeans talk about our CPF, when we raise our concerns, it is the responsibility of the government to listen. That's right! Now why do Singaporeans have to sell our homes? Because we do not have enough to retire on. Now why do Singaporeans have to sell our homes? Because we cannot pay for the medical bills. Why are elderly Singaporeans continue working? Because our CPF is not good enough for them to retire on. Now if the CPF is not good enough, then can we still trust the government to take care of our CPF? Now today, our grandmothers and our grandfathers, they have to work as cleaners, or job laborers, and cardboard collectors. 20 years ago, low-income workers were earning $800. Today, they are still earning $800. Now if they cannot retire, is it because they did not work hard enough? No! Or is it because they did not get paid enough? Yes! You don't have many sons. Now last week, a Singaporean told me, the government makes me beg them. But I have my dignity. I also have my pride. Now if I keep begging and the government does not help me, now why should I keep begging? Do our poor remain poor? Because they do not work hard enough. Is it right for our lower income Singaporeans to believe that they should remain poor because they are not good enough? No! Not smart enough? Not hardworking enough? No, it is not right. Our poor and our elderly workers work the longest hours in Singapore. Yeah. Now if that is not hardworking, what is? Singaporeans are reasonable people. We are hardworking people. Yeah. We will work hard if we know that for the sake of our country, for our families, for our lives, we will work hard for it. Yes. But when we work so hard and we realize that we are being taken for granted, then how can we still have faith in the government that they will protect our interests and our rights. Today, many Singaporeans cannot retire. Today, Singaporeans work very hard, but we cannot see our CPF. Today, we fear that we might not be safe in our own country. Now, it is now a known fact that the government takes our CPF to invest in the GIC. The government's investment fund. The government takes our CPF to earn 6.5%, but they only give us back 2.5 to 4%. This is the lowest interest rate in the world. In the 1970s and 1980s, Singaporeans were earning 6.5% interest on our CPF. Now some of you might remember that. So why did the government push down our CPF interest rates to 2.5% in 1999 and kept it at a low 2.5% since 1999? Because they need money to shoot people! Buy a car! Now Singaporeans today cannot retire because our CPF cannot grow. Our wages did not grow, our CPF interest rates did not grow, and today, that is why our CPF does not grow. But prices grew, housing prices grew, and the CPF minimum sum grew. Why should the government be increasing the CPF minimum sum by more than 6% 
knowing full well that Singaporeans will never be able to grow our CPF fast enough to catch up with the CPF minimum sum. Now this is illogical. Yes. What is the government trying to do with our CPF? Alibaba! Now on the GIC's website, they have previously said that GIC manages the government reserves. But as to how the funds from the CPF monies flow into the reserves, which can then be managed by either MAS, GIC, and Tamasic. This is not made explicit to us. The, the GIC also said that the government, which is represented by the Ministry of Finance and its dealings with GIC, neither directs nor interferes in the company's investment decisions. It holds the board accountable for the overall portfolio performance. So the GIC claimed that they do not know how they are using our CPF funds to invest. And the GIC claim that the government does not interfere in the GIC. So I repeat, the GIC claim that they do not know how they are using our CPF monies. But when you look at the GIC's board of directors, the chairman is a Singapore Prime Minister! The board of directors are the Deputy Prime Ministers and two ministers! Kaoman, Teo Chi Hien, Heng Sui Kiet, and Lim Heng Kiang. The senior advisor is Lee Kuan Yew. So how can it be possible that the GIC does not know how they are using our CPF. How can it be possible that the government does not interfere in the GIC? Now then who is not telling the truth? Is the GIC not telling the truth? Or is the government not telling the truth? After this fact has been exposed, the GIC changed what they say on their website. Now it says, GIC, along with MES, managed to proceed from the securities invested and guaranteed by the government, which CPF board has invested in the CPF monies. So while the CPF monies are not directly transferred to GIC, for management, one of the sources of funds that goes into the government assets managed by GIC is the proceeds from SSGS or our CPF. Now what the government is saying is that our CPF, now what the GIC is saying is that our CPF is invested in government securities which goes into the government assets managed by the GIC. In short, the GIC manages our CPF. So from not knowing how our CPF is being invested in the GIC, suddenly the GIC and the government knows how our CPF is managed by the GIC. Why did the GIC suddenly change what they say and suddenly admit that they know how they are using our CPF? Now why did the GIC make this about turn? Why did the GIC change what they say after the information became public? So why did the GIC first tell us that they do not know that they are using our CPM and suddenly tell us that they do? Now all this while the Singapore Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Ministers and the Ministers are on the board of directors of the GIC. So what game are they playing? Now not only that, 
The fund managers at the GIC also are paid a fee to manage the funds in the GIC or our CPF. Now how much is this fee? There is no transparency as to how much this is. Now the ministers are currently paid millions of dollars from our taxpayers' money. How much more are they paid as fund managers from our CPF monies? Now does it make sense that the ministers are paid millions when Singaporeans are unable to take our CPF funds out? Now what we should ask is this. Should the Prime Minister of Singapore be on the board of the directors of GIC? No! Should the Deputy Prime Ministers and the Ministers be on the board of the GIC? No! Is there a conflict of interest? Yes! Yeah! Very conflict! Now who will protect our CPF money if the government is also the GIC? The GIC does not publish full reports on how they use our funds. Do we know what the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister and the Ministers are using our funds for? Buy aircraft, buy aircraft. Here you go, here you go. Now a few days ago, Tabasi Holdings wrote to the Straits Times to say, that the Marseille Holdings does not invest or manage the, the savings of CPF members. Okay. Now in the book, development states, relevancy, redundancy or reconfiguration, it was stated, since the late 1970s, CPS reserves, as part of public sector surplus, have been co-mingled with other invest investments either domestically by Tomasek Holdings or abroad by the GIC. If so, does this mean that at one point in time, our CPF was invested in Tomasek Holdings? Yeah. If so, when did the government stop investing our CPF in the Tomasek Holdings? No. 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 Last year? A few years ago? Ten years ago? Can the government be transparent with us? Yeah. Now, the Muslim Holdings earned a 16% interest rate. If our CPF was invested in the Muslim Holdings, then we should get our interest back. Yeah. Now, last year, I had also looked through several government websites and found specific evidence of how our CPF is invested in the Muslim Holdings and GIC. From what I had gathered from several government websites, I was able to trace that our CPF monies are invested in bonds or special government, Singapore government securities, which are then invested in reserves, and which are managed by three agencies, the GIC, the Masek Holdings, and the MAS. However, last week, I checked on these websites again. The government has now removed or change some of this information on their websites. Now, now you can no longer tell that your CPF is invested in the GIC and Hamasai Holdings. First, the government removed information that our CPF is invested in the reserves. Next, the government removed information that shows directly that our reserves are managed by the GIC, the Mustang Holdings and the MAS. So why did the government remove this full information? Why does the government does not want us to know that our CPF is invested in the GIC and the Mustang Holdings? What is the government trying to hide? <laughs> Finally, in 1993, President Ong Ping Chiang wanted to fulfill his responsibilities 
as our elected president to protect our reserves and our CPF. Thank you, President Ong Teng Chong. Yeah. President Ong Teng Chong asked the government to let him know how much there are in the reserves. The government told him that it would take 56 man years to count and let him know. But now, we know that the reserves are managed by the GIC, the Tamasi Holdings and the MAS. If so, the GIC, Tamasi Holdings and MAS should, would have kept full and proper records of how they are dealing with our money. So how can it be possible that it will take 56 million years for them to count how much there are in the reserves? Ask them how many days they count their salary. Now, if the GIC, Tamasic Holdings and MAS are not keeping proper records, then we have to question, are they handling our money properly? No! Can we trust them with our funds if they cannot keep proper records of our money? No! Now, but if they do keep proper records of our money, why did they tell President Ong Teng Cheong that it would take 56 man years to let him know how much there are in our reserves? Now, President Ong Teng Cheong had wanted to protect Singaporeans President Ong Teng Chong had wanted to protect our CPF. President Ong Teng Chong had wanted to protect our reserves. And if President Ong Teng Chong was not allowed to know how much there are in our reserves, then who else can be allowed to know? Transparency. When there is no transparency, will there be honesty? No. When there is no transparency, will there be justice? No. Now, when there is no transparency, will there be accountability? No. When there is no accountability, will we know what is happening to our CPF? No. Now, when Singaporeans cannot retire, why? When Singaporeans cannot take our CPF out, why? Now when our CPF is trapped inside, why? When there is no transparency, can there be honesty? No! So I ask again, did the GIC and Tamasic Holdings use our CPF money? How long have they been using our money to earn for themselves? How much money has they earned from our CPF? Now we want full records, not just from today, but from all the years since 1974 when the Holdings was set up. Now we want full transparency and we want full records and the government is listening to us today. Some of you are with us. Now we want transparency and we want full records. Yeah. 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 Now it is time the government stops hiding. Singaporeans have enough. The only way we will know is if the government shows us the records. Now show us the records. Tell us the truth. Be honest with integrity to Singaporeans. Yeah. Now I have spoken up because I believe that as a government, there is a responsibility and a duty to the people. 
A government has to be honest and accountable to the people. A government has to be truthful to the people. A government has to be honest with the people. The Singaporeans have a right to know where our CPF money is going. Yes. If we cannot retire, we have a right to know. That's right. Now to grow our CPF, the government has to increase our wages. Yes. To grow our CPF, the government has to increase the CPF interest rates. That's right. Now when our wages grow, when our CPF interest rates grow, our CPF will grow, and Singaporeans will be able to retire with dignity and with respect. That's right. The what we want is not the CPF minimum sum. The what we want is minimum wage. Now what we want is not for the government to take our CPF to earn high interest at the GIC and the Marseille Holdings. Now what we want is for our interest that our CPF earned to be returned back to Singaporeans. Yeah. Yeah. Now what we want is not for the government to take our CPF to use without telling Singaporeans. Now what we want is for Singaporeans to be consulted on before the government takes our money to use. Now what we want is not for the government to tell us that it is not in our interest to know what they are doing with our CPF money. Now what we want is transparency and accountability. Now the CPF is our money. We, the citizens of Singapore, are the owners of our money. Yeah. And we, the citizens of Singapore, are the owners of our country. Yeah. It is our right to decide what to do yeah. with our CPF money. Yeah. Now it is not the prerogative of the government to decide what they want to do with our CPF money and to tell us, take it or leave it. That's right! Yeah. No, it is not. It is the responsibility of the government to listen to us, the citizens of Singapore, yeah. and to do what we want them to do. Yeah. Now this is what the government should do. It is the responsibility of the government to act in accordance to Singaporeans' wants and not make Singaporeans act in accordance to what they want. Yeah. Now we, the citizens of Singapore, decided who to be voted into the government. Yeah. Now we will use our votes wisely. Yeah. We will use our votes wisely! Yeah. No mercy! No mercy! Now it is the government that should listen to the people and not the other way around. Yeah. Instead of 2.5%, Singaporeans should be earning a much higher interest on our CPF. Instead of only receiving a few hundred dollars from our CPF payout, Singaporeans should be receiving a much higher payout. Yeah. Instead of having our retirement funds trapped inside the CPF, Singaporeans should be, wave, should be able to withdraw it and to opt out from the CPF minimum sum and the CPF life. Yeah. Now if the GIC and the domestic holdings take our CPF money to invest, then we demand full transparency, accountability and full reports on how, how our CPF monies are being used. Yeah. No, it is. It is the duty of the government to listen, 
to answer and to respond. It is not right if a government chooses to stop Singaporeans from asking these questions. We have a right. Singaporeans, we have a right. When we see our elderly working as cleaners, or job laborers, cardboard collectors, is it right that after giving their lives to Singapore to build what it is today, that we have to continue to make them poor and work? No. Do the ministers have the heart to see our elderly work like that? Now as Singaporeans, as a society, we have a responsibility to our elders. If they want to work, we have to respect them. But if they want to rest and finally spend some time for themselves in their golden years, we have a responsibility as a people to ensure that they are able to do so. Now when we see Singaporeans who earn low wages, is it right that we judge them and think that they are earning low wages because they are not working hard enough? As a people, we have to value one another and all Singaporeans equally. No matter whether you are a CEO, a cleaner, a teacher, or a nurse, or a prime minister, each and every life is valuable. Each and every life should be respected. Now each and every life has to be honored. Now we are Singaporeans. We have to protect one another. Now we have to treat our people with dignity, with pride, and with kindness, and pay them right. Now when we see our families with children, is it right to leave them, to leave our families to fend for themselves, to pay for expensive health care and education? Now as a society, we have a responsibility to our community and to our families to take care of them and to take care of one another. We have a duty to protect the members of our community and our larger families. Singaporeans, if we rise together, our country will grow! Yeah. Now if we fight together, yeah. our country will grow! Yeah. And we have to speak up! And we have to do what is right for ourselves. Because we are the citizens of Singapore. Singapore is at the crossroads. Where do we go from here? Change yes. <laughs> Regime change! Singapore is our country. Singapore is our home. Today I have spoken up, and so have many others. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Now many people have spoken up, sent messages, and supported me in this journey. I thank you, and I am grateful. Now I am an ordinary Singaporean. I want to, I want to speak up before because I care for our country. Now we speak up because all of us care for our country. And that is why so many of you are here today. Now today we have spoken up and today we have made ourselves heard. Today is a new beginning and we must take it like a new beginning. Now today, Singaporeans will come together and chart a new journey. And chart a new direction for our country and our future. Now no more shall we keep quiet. Now no more shall we be shy. And we will continue to fight. Now I believe that one day our people will be free, yeah. respected, and equal as we once were. I believe that we can live our lives happy, together, and hopeful. So our children. Now I believe in a society where our all are able to retire with dignity. I believe in a society where our poor are not poor, but rich. Where our families are strong and where Singaporeans are proud and confident of who we are. That's right! Now I believe that we, that one day, all of us will speak from our hearts to care for one another and to care for the person next to us. Yeah. Now I believe that we can see a more equal, a happier, a just, and dignify Singapore and Singaporeans today and our lifetime. Yeah. Now this is what I believe. Now when we believe, we can make it happen. When we believe from deep within our hearts, Find the strength from deep within and believe in ourselves. We can make it happen. Yeah. Now when we believe, we can see the future that we have always wished grow in front of our very eyes. Now if we have the courage and we believe and we hold on to it. The Singapore that we want will happen. Yeah. Now many of us have dreams and hopes for a beautiful future and a new Singapore. Now just believe, stay true. Stay united. It is time. 
If we believe, let's make it happen now. If we believe, let's make it happen. Now it's time, my friends. The time for change is now. Take heart. Take pride. Stay strong. Stay strong and we will make it happen. Majula Singapura! Majula Singapura! Majula! My friends, it is time to awaken. It is time to rise. It is time we, the citizens of Singapore, take control and take back our lives, our money, our pride, yes. and our country. The time for change is now. The time for change is today in our hands. Take it. Use it. Be brave. Be the change you wish to see. And let's work together to create the Singapore we have always wanted and what we will be proud of. A Singapore which is equal, just, honest, and fair. A transparent and accountable Singapore where all Singaporeans and people of our land will be protected and cared for. Now this is the Singapore that we are proud of, that we once were proud of. And the Singapore that then is time for us to fight with our lives for. Yeah. Today, I have taken only but just one step. Tomorrow, all of you will take the other step. Today, I am brave. Tomorrow, all of you will be brave. But tomorrow, all of you will speak up! Yeah. Now it is time, my friends. Speak up. Believe. And make our dreams come true. Speak up. Believe and have hope that the future and the Singapore that we want will be seen today! Yeah. Singapore! Thank you!